In this world, we have to contend with so many different pressures. There's the pressure that comes with family. There's the pressure that comes with work. There's pressure that comes from society. Now, what we have to realize is that a lot of the pressures we contend with, a lot of the weight we carry, it all stems from the world's set of standards. And do you know what? It's easy to fall into conformity, to do what unbelievers do and to be as they are. But as Christian men and women, we're called to model our lives like Christ. We're called to live in a godly manner, fearing the Lord and obeying Him even when it doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The opposite of conformity is a renewed mind. The way God views the world and our lives is counterintuitive to everything our culture teaches. Therefore, we must be willing to let him change us and reteach us how to think. Then we'll be equipped to live a life that's pleasing to him. 1 Peter 1, verses 14 through 16 says, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. You see, the reason the world acts the way it does is because of ignorance. They don't comprehend the beauty and the worth of the gospel. They don't understand that what God has in store for them is infinitely better than the empty promises of sin. But thank God He has opened our eyes. He has called us out of our ignorant ways and into something so much greater. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Since we have these promises, beloved, let us clean ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew people would form Ritual cleansings after encountering anything unclean. What if we showed that same kind of dedication to the spots of worldliness in our lives? What if we were determined to make a clean break with any habit, any behavior, any attitude not pleasing to God? 2 Timothy 2 verse 21 says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. Oftentimes, we find ourselves acting like the world because we're afraid of stepping on toes. We are afraid of the ridicule or the criticism that we might receive if we show ourselves to be true followers of Christ. And deep down, we are afraid that somehow, by letting go of this world, we might be missing out. But when we separate ourselves from the world, we are not depriving ourselves of any good thing. Rather, we are taking hold of the promises of God, which is far greater. Now let's go to God together in prayer. Father God, thank you. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for giving us a purpose beyond what this world has to offer. You, Lord, have been so good, and you've done so many good things for us, and we thank you. Father, our prayer today is that we would not be conformed to this world in any way, but instead, I pray that the Holy Spirit would move in our lives and stir us up. I pray that he'd stir us up so that we can be transformed by the renewal of our minds. 
Lord, there is so much pressure in this world today. There's pressure to be like everyone else, to blend in with the crowd. But Father, I ask that you'd keep us strong. King Jesus, may we never bow down to pressures of this world. We ask that you would give us the grace and strength to be the salt of the earth, to be the light in this world. Lord, I pray for every person listening, for anyone struggling with the pressures of this world. Give them the strength not to conform to this world. Give them the strength to stand out, to live life differently. Lord, give them the strength to think against the grain, And Father, help us to never conform to the wicked ways of this world. May we never conform to the world's way of living, which leads to death and destruction. But may we follow your way, which leads to everlasting life. Father, we understand that we may have to endure ridicule and mockery in this life. But I know that our reward in heaven will be so much greater. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Father, let there be no love of the world in my heart. Help me to be on guard against worldly traps. Lord, don't let me fall into habits that grieve your Holy Spirit. Don't let me start acting in ways that might harm my witness for Christ. God, we find so often that Satan disguises sin as something good and desirable. But Lord, help me to not only recognize these works of darkness, but Lord, also help me to expose them and warn those around me so that they won't be caught unaware. God, give me the courage and strength to stand up against evil whenever I see it. Build within me a character that is fully equipped and emboldened to stand for the gospel. For the gospel is the only thing with the power to transform lives and hearts in this dark and sinful world. Lord, let that transformation begin in my own mind. God, I ask you to change my desires so that I no longer think or act like the world but instead help me to imitate the example of Christ in all of my conduct. Instead of bitterness, fill me with love, Lord. Instead of jealousy, fill me with gratitude. Break me of every habit and every attitude that resembles the world. And Father, teach me to obey you instead. May your Holy Spirit fill me and help me to discern your perfect will for my life. God, I know that I cannot follow your will without letting go of all my earthly treasures and fully surrendering to you. So, Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would consecrate me, set me apart for service in your kingdom. May the world look at my life and notice that there is a difference. And then, may they give glory to the one to whom all glory belongs. And that is you, my Lord and Savior. I ask all these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.